Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our TEPSA Talk podcast. My name is Todd Nesloni, and I'm your host. I'm the Director of Culture and Strategic Leadership here at the Texas Elementary Principals and Supervisors Association. We are thrilled every week to bring you different thought leaders from around the world, and I couldn't be more excited to be talking today to the one, the only, Stephanie McConnell. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. For people who may not know who you are, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself? Uh, Happy to be here. I'm so excited to be a part of this. Uh, Of course, I'm Stephanie, and I have been a school leader for a long time, and currently I'm in the role of assistant superintendent. And so, but before that I was a principal for many, many years. And I think that's still my favorite position that I've ever have served. Um, And absolutely love that. Um, It's been a great journey. And now I still do that and run principal principals uh, as well. So it's a great, great duo, I think. Well, I, I love all the different things you're putting together. You also forgot to mention you're a published author oh, yeah. um, and things like that, because you've done a lot of cool things. You've been a TEPSA member, so we've been proud to have you as part of that family. But today we're talking about following our passions. Now, obviously, people listening to this are probably primarily in an administrative role, and I'm sure at some point they were in the classroom. I mean, hopefully, most administrators have served in the classroom. Um, And when they became a teacher, they were really passionate about that. And then that passion shifted into administration, and then that became something they were passionate about as well. What did your journey kind of look like through that process? Well, when I was a teacher, um, I never thought I'd go back to college, you know, and want to be a principal or anything like that. It never dawned on me that that would be. And then at some point in my journey uh, of being a teacher, that itch came and I was like, I'm I'm kind of fascinated with what school leaders do. And uh, I've had such a great opportunity of having some wonderful people in my life that mentored me at, you know, in that role and uh, principals that I have looked up to for years. And so at, when I knew it was coming to me, you know, would talk to them and say, hey, what do, what do you think? And they encouraged me to go. Uh, go back in and get my principal degree. And um, it was a great ride. Like I I went after that, graduated from that and went into um, being an assistant principal because I really think there's a lot to learn about being a principal. And jumping into the assistant role um, was a great feat. That's where I learned all about TEPSA too, is when I was assistant principal because my principal was going to TEPSA and took me along. And uh, I went every year after that. And we actually stayed the whole week because before that, when we first started, there was a law conference or something before TEPSA. And so it was a long week of us being together and team building and things. And so that's kind of my journey into that. And then once I became assistant um, I was there just for a couple of years, and then I became a principal of the camp, one of the campuses in that district, and uh, loved it, absolutely loved it. And now I'm over into another district, and was principal, and now assistant superintendent. Now, obviously, some point along that path, you go and create this little Facebook group um, yeah. called Principal Principals. Where did that come from? Because that thing has taken off like crazy wildfire. And I know that it's one of those things that when you make it, you don't anticipate what it could really become. Um, So tell me a little bit about how that became what it is. So I I never dreamed how it was going to happen. But while I was a principal early in that career, um, there are tons of resources for teachers but there wasn't at the time anything for us as principals. And so I thought, what if I start sharing and maybe other people will start sharing? And then it just took off and I decided, okay, well, let's move it to not just a page because I have my principal principals page, but I have a group and it's so it's filled with 
thousands and thousands of principles all over the world, which give you gives you such a perspective on education and teaching and learning and everything and leadership from different perspectives because of different journeys or different countries and what they are, their expectations and stuff. Never did I expect it to become like this. And I've met so many amazing people through that group and become friends with them um, outside of that group too. So it, it, I never, never saw that happening. And then somewhere along the way, it turned into a business which at the time I had absolutely no idea that that would ever happen and how that happened. I'm still in shock about it. Um, so I just, uh, it, it just evolved over time. And now it is something that's actually a full-time job in itself yeah. and, and running, uh, you know, being at the school as well. You know, so we, we called this episode following your passions because you know, I'm, I've always been one that believes that as we grow and get older and experience more life, we can see our passions begin to change and shift. And it doesn't mean we love something less that we were passionate about before. It just means like, oh, this avenue sounds exciting. I'm really passionate about it. Let me go try that. And so as you began to follow this principle principles and see it take off and then it became a business, but you still loved doing what you're doing now as your day mm -hmm. job as well, you know, how do you balance the two passions where let's just start with where you don't feel like you're not giving your all to both of them. Cause I know that's, that's really uh, that a type of your personality and my personality where it's like, we feel bad if we're not giving our all to something. Um, yeah. And so how do you balance that? Just giving your all to both things you're passionate about. Um, well, I mean, it takes commitment and it keeps, it's also discipline in myself to stay on the journey. There are days where, you know, or weekends or something where I do less of the business and more with my family. So I, that's something I had to learn is like when to cut it off at night. Um, I, instead I shift my time to early mornings. I'm up at 3 a.m., um, running the business before school, get ready to go to school and then go to work all day. <laughs> I know. So I've been up since three this morning, but um, also have a lot of things on autopilot um, that can help me um, that it's generating things at during the day that I have had to learn because technology is so amazing. Or in there's times when there's maybe a big launch that I hire people to help yeah. me. Uh, build some systems and things to help me with that. But yeah, with with this passion, it comes a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, once I turned it to a business instead of just like, hey, this is, you know, <laughs> let's talk, you know, let's share ideas to, hey, I can generate funds from that yeah. and create a successful business from it. Um, I had to stay very disciplined. So when people are having their Thanksgiving break or their Christmas breaks. I'm still working because the business never stops. And yeah. uh, but but that's because I'm passionate about it, too. You know, like I love what I do. I love serving those uh, that are in the trenches doing what we're doing every day. Uh, I love giving them the tools and the resources that will improve their leadership or to improve student outcomes, because I have found found my niche niche or niche along the way because I feel like, you know, at first I was probably all over the place. If you go back <laughs> to my blog, it's like hitting everything. And then I finally figured out where my true passion is, which yeah. is leadership, it's morale, and it is improving student outcomes. Those are my big three yeah. that I stay around because yeah. that, that's me, you know, in a nutshell. Well, there's two really cool things that I that you said there that I hope people heard. The first is this, is that I love how you talked about how this was something you were passionate about, but you still didn't have it quite narrowed down at the beginning. Yeah. You were just kind of like, I just love doing this. And then as you did more and more and more of the work, you started realizing, oh, I really am good in this lane, this yeah. particular area. And I love that because sometimes I think people have to know right away what they're into. And it's like, no, you can fall in love with something in a big picture and then narrow it down into what you're really, really strong at. But I think the other thing you said there that I really hope people hear is when you go and pursue something you're passionate about, 
it is going to take work. Yeah. It is going to take sacrifice. It is going to take commitment. I mean, look at the job everybody's in right now. Nobody yeah. has a principal job. They're like, this is so easy. Like, this was my passion. So this is so easy. It's like, no, no matter what you're passionate about, if you're going to do it well, yeah. it's going to take work. But you're willing to put in the extra work because you love it so much. And that's what I love about what you said is you may get up early in the morning and you may do these things and, and all this, but you love doing it. So yeah. for somebody else who goes, what? You're really doing that? They don't love it the way you love it. And right. that's that's how you know you're really passionate about something. But in addition to that, you also said something that I think is important people to hear in. We, we're able to do these passionate things in addition to some other things that we're doing because we learn systems along the way mm -hmm. that help make things easier. So right. I love that you shared all of that. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so so, I, I know one thing that I have to rely on the most is my family. I have a very supportive husband who understands, you know, like right now he's in there getting to watch a movie and I am in here still working, you know, but, um, you know, it's like that support system. It's also, you know, the fuel behind everything. Yeah. Like when I see another principal being successful because of our our conversations or the resources they're using. And that's I'm not saying that that's all they're doing. It's oh, only something that I'm providing. It's just that if I've had some small impact in their life and it's making a difference, that fueled me to keep going. And that's yeah. what gets me up in the morning, um, even though it's hard some days, you know, yeah. when it's raining or it's cold outside, you don't <laughs> want to get up. But, you know, you have to because you have people depending on you as well. Yeah, it's that extra motivation that really just keeps you going. And I love how you said it. it's when you see that the work you're doing has an impact that you're like, oh, I can keep doing this because, look, even if it was just that one that mm -hmm. got me to keep going again. Now, then at some point you realize, well, you know, I have so much free time on my hand, Todd. I'm just going to write a book. Um, and so you've done that. And now you're also publishing other people as yes. well. And so where did that kind of bubble up from? So, yeah, I don't know where I get these ideas from that I can handle these projects all the time. But I am very selective in who I'm publishing um, as far as like writing the book, um, you know, writing when time took me nine months. So I always yeah. say I felt like I birthed a child and I really <laughs> did. Like I was so tired from writing. Um, and then I decided somebody else reached out to me. And they said, I like to learn how to become an author. And so I'm like, well, let me help you. And then that now has to stem to like 10 other authors being published under me. And what I do is I take their manuscript, you know, they submit and they pitch their idea to me. Is And if it falls in those categories of things that I I want or I see a need or a gap in the, you know, the literature that's out there, then I definitely want to support them and help them on that journey. So I'll help publish it. I will I do the interior, exterior of the books and um, you know, I have an editor that edits all the books for me and I, I do all the design, that. the graphics, the uploads, everything. And then once they're finished, I hand it off to them. I don't yeah. take royalties or anything like that. So my job is on the front end and they get the rewards on the end. And so that that's exciting. That yeah. is so exciting to see uh, somebody being published, but I only do like one or two a year from. Uh, so that kind of is a process. So. Yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Well, Stephanie, in addition to all of this, what I find really exciting of something that you're doing right now is your win time. Yeah. Um, you've got a whole program, everything. And I, I see people using it or sharing it online. I'm like, I know who made that. <laughs> so where, where did that come from? Um, just thinking of that and then being able to develop it all along this process. I mean, that, that I'm sure took forever to have done yeah. how beautifully it's done now. So it didn't start off being called wind time. I started using it, the systems in uh, my previous school and we called it flex time because our schedules were flexible to serve students. And over time uh, it, it evolved over to this 
just like anything, you know, like a project you're working on, you want you want to keep, you know, making it better and over and over again. But I love all things data. I love all things organization. But when I was serving students, um, I noticed that when they would leave the room to go to intervention, they were embarrassed and they were coming back behind because instruction continued in the classroom while they were out. And so I said, well, this is not benefiting students. This is actually creating larger gaps in my students by doing that way. So what I've created is a master schedule that protects tier one time. And so all students, not just intervention students, all students get have win time because you're either going to do intervention or you're going to enrichment. And so nobody's embarrassed. Instruction stopped in that room besides wind time groups or wherever wind time was happening in the building. And um, so that helped the situation. And what happened is the district that I'm in right now, and I'm not saying wind time is the only factor that right, right, right. this is one factor, but it was an F campus when I came and it's a national blue ribbon awarded mm -hmm. after two years of very mm -hmm. being very consistent with systems in place, had the right teachers in place, had the right systems in place. And we were intervening on the right students with the right teaks and standards in mind as well. So that's kind of how that involved. And then so we're doing all of that in spreadsheets and keeping up with our groups and creep keeping up with data over here and all that. And I said, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. And so I'm always thinking there's a better way to do what I'm doing. And so that's how the next product came through, which is the wind time software that actually just launched um, because I had it before, but the company that helped me build it, they sold their company. And yeah. so I lost that software. And so now I have had to rebuild it again with other uh, software developers. So that's now the software is here. I love it. Well, Stephanie, there's so many things that you're pursuing, all these different types of passions. And I know people are listening and they're probably thinking, I, I ain't never going to have that many passions like Todd. I just have one and that's okay. Um, so when people are listening right now and they're thinking, I am passionate about stuff, Stephanie, but my job is so consuming. Yeah. I don't know how to pursue what I'm passionate about in addition to doing my job. What advice would you give to them? Well, I think you um, narrowing it down. You know, sometimes, in just like me, I may have multiple things going on, but they are all still fitting in my three big categories. Um, so I would say to find that one category that they are most most passionate about and take it down that journey. Do a little bit every day, even if it's before school, after school. If you get a lunch, you could read, you know, a few minutes a day uh, on that topic and just start to grow yourself in it. Because one of the, I guess, the hurdles I've had to overcome is that we didn't go to school for business. Right. Right. Exactly. To school to be educators. And so I've had to learn marketing and business and, you know, all those things that I didn't know how to do. And so um, along with learning that one thing, I'm asking these principals to, you know, to explore their passion. in. you're if you want to make it become a business you're going to have to find some time for that other part of it but maybe it's not maybe that's not what they want to do maybe they want to do it just for enjoyment like i did at first which i still enjoy it but then at some point it had to shift because yeah. it was consuming so much of my time um, that i had to make some adjustments you know, I think that's just great advice. Uh, if you're truly passionate about it, you'll figure out a way to make it fit into what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but like you also said, you've got to do some research. Like even something you're passionate about doesn't mean you know all about it. <laughs> and it doesn't mean you're going to do it well right away. I think you can agree with me that, Stephanie, there are many things you and I have tried that we did not do well at the beginning yeah. um, and that we're very, very proud of it now. But it took us quite a while to get to yeah. where we are. 
Um, <clears throat> but I, I love just all the things you shared with the ideas. I love that you just shared so many different passions in this conversation because I think it's a reminder to people again that you don't just have to have one thing. You don't just have to have one lane. You can follow things as they interest you and, and see where it takes you. Mm -hmm. And so if people want to connect with you more, Stephanie, or want to learn more about wind time or your books, or how could they can work with you? Like, how can they connect with you? Well, you know, I'm all, all social media. If it exists, <laughs> I'm on it. It's principal principles. And then, um, you know, you can email my principal principles at gmail.com and um, I'll be happy to help in any way I can. Uh, it's just something I just enjoy and I look forward to to helping anybody who's interested in learning the business or learning wind time or leadership or any of those other things. So if you're listening today, go check out her book, Win Time. Go email her or connect with her to learn more about all these resources. Join that Facebook group if you're not already in it because there's so many great people learning and connecting in there as well. And if you're not a member of TEPSA, now's a great time to be one. If you work with pre-K through eighth grade, instructional materials, data, uh, uh, discipline, if you're working with teacher evaluations and you're in pre-K through eighth grade, you can be a TEPSA member. We would love to have you here at it at here at Tepsa. So thank you so much for joining this week's conversation with the always incredible Stephanie McConnell and join us again next week for an all new episode.